Hello everyone and welcome to FRQ4 and FRQ4 is probably my favorite FRQ the reason being is that it has very pure algebraic manipulations and not only me but many people find that rather intriguing and amazing and easy at the same time if you get a hold of it so let's dive right in without wasting any more time all right in the first part of FRE4 you will generally be given two equations and then you will be asked to find the variable or x value for for a particular output over here we have g of x is equal to e to the power x plus 3 and h of x is equal to arc sine or sine inverse of x by 2. the first part is solve g of x is equal to 10 for values of x in the domain of g now we all know how to algebraically manipulate it so first of all i'll have e to the power x plus 3 is equal to 10. now whenever you see the constant e in your equation remember the first step is to take the natural log of both sides i'll have natural log of e to the power x plus 3 is equal to natural log of 10. now according to the power rule we can move x plus 3 into multiplication i have x plus 3 times ln of e is equal to ln of 10. now i know ln of e is just 1 so i have x plus 3 is equal to ln of 10 and x would be ln of 10 minus 3 and since you do not have the graphing calculator this is your final answer which will get you full credit i hope that was very simple and clear let's move ahead very similar to the first part we have h of x is equal to pi over 4 for values of x in the domain of h now we remember our h of x was arc sine of x over 2 is equal to pi over 4 now we know this statement is the same as sine of pi over 4 now we all know what sine pi over 4 is x by 2 is equal to root 2 over 2 if you move 2 to the other end oops if you move 2 to the other end i have x is equal to root 2 that is it you see how very simple are the frqs compared to the mcqs in an mcq you would have to think what they want and the option is rather confusing but over here it is quite simple and straightforward so do not lose credit in these questions let's move on now in part b we are given two functions g of x and k of x my k of x is on the next slide so we can work on each one of them separately now they want us to simplify g of x and rewrite it as a logarithm with a single base we'll start simplifying it we know that according to the product rule this can be written as log 8 into x to the power 5 times 2 into x square so this will just be log 8x5 times 2x square minus 9 log x now we know that if i have a subtraction and again note that they have the same base all of them are base 10 so it helps me simplifying it now I could have log 8 times 2 is 16 and x5 into x2 is x7. So I have log 16 into x to the power 7 minus 9 log x. Now, according to the power rule, I can have log 16 x to the power 7 minus log x to the power 9 if we just reverse the power rule. And now, according to the division rule, I can actually rewrite this as log of 16 in the power 16 times x to the power 7 upon x to the power 9 and when we simplify this further i have log 16 over x square and that is it that is your final answer you have rewritten the logarithm as a single base term which is 16 over x square that was quite simple let's move ahead now we have our function k of x which is 1 minus sine square theta upon sine x times sec x 
this is a printing mistake so this is x so we have 1 minus sine square x upon sine x times sec x and we have to rewrite k of x as a single term involving tan now what i'll do is according to the pythagorean property i have sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. now if i move sine square to the other end i have cos square x is equal to 1 minus sine square x we will keep this equation in mind because we have a 1 minus sine square x so my k of x would essentially be i already showed you how 1 minus sine square x is equal to cos square x so i can rewrite this as cos square x upon sine x times sec x now if you are smart enough which everyone is you can write this as cos x times cos x upon sin x remember this entire thing is the same i am just rewriting cos square x as cos into cos times sec x now i know that cos x times sec x are just one they value to just one because they are the reciprocals of each other so i have cos x upon sin x which i get after cancelling these two and cos x over sin x is cot x but cot x is 1 over tan x and there we go that is your beautiful answer 1 over tan x welcome to the last part of the last frq and it will give pleasure to all and all <laughs> okay it says find the values find all the values in the domain of m that yield an output of zero you have the function quickly put in m of x is equal to zero you have zero is equal to cos inverse of tan of 2x now since we have a cos inverse this will be cos zero which is equal to tan of 2x now we know cos zero is just one so one is equal to tan of 2x now when is tan one at pi by four but here is the crunch moment where most of the people will lose their credit. Now, what a regular student would do is that he'd say, hey, I can add 2 pi n where n is an integer and this would get me the same result and this would be equal to 2x. While this is true, there is nothing wrong about that. I will explain you why instead of a 2 pi n, the correct answer would just be a pi over n. The correct answer would be a pi of pi over of n and if you bring 2 to the other side i have pi over 8 plus pi n over 2 is equal to x that is your correct answer now you may ask why pi times n instead of 2 pi over n 2 pi times n because generally the way we have practiced we always get plus 2 pi n now i'll tell you why if you look at the angle pi over 4 it lies somewhere right here okay 45 degrees which means it would bisect this angle now we know that sine is the sine of x is the y coordinate and cos x is the x coordinate x coordinate now since tan theta is in the first quadrant the x coordinate and y coordinate both are positive and we know tan theta or tan x is equal to sin x over cos x since both of these values are positive we will have a positive one but what if i add pi to it adding pi to it means it will land up here not making the full turn now what about this i know the magnitude will still be one but understand that this is a third quadrant where sine and cosine are both negative now since both of them are negative i have a negative over negative which is a positive and that is the reason why I say pi over 4 plus pi times n instead of plus 2 pi n because whether in the first quadrant or the third quadrant we have a positive over a positive or a negative over a negative which is still a positive one and that is why we have pi times n instead of 2 pi n. Now that is the end of my series. I hope everything was quite helpful even a small part was helpful. I'm grateful for that. If there is any doubt make sure to tell me in the comment section below i'll reply as soon as possible and that's all i have to say have a great test best of luck thank you and have a great day ahead